Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Crystal Ann Compton and I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. In this video, I am going to be sharing with you a recent conversation that I had with my good friend Brian Fisher because Brian wanted to know why there were UFOs over Ukraine because I guess a lot of astronomers and scientists are picking up a lot of interesting anomalies and some of them they I think can explain away but a lot of them they can't and so we're going to have a discussion on what might be happening and why we also get into a conversation about my feelings on Putin and what might happen with Putin in terms of this war. I don't give a full on prediction, but like what's in the timelines right now. And we end the video talking about like, how can we have peace on earth? <laughs> is there a way to have peace on earth? And the answer is yes. Short answer is yes. But we do talk about that in a fun and pleasant way. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, I also wanted to ask you because of late, um, for a while, actually, I don't monetize my videos. I hope that that means that you are not served ads when you have been watching my videos recently. I'm not sure though, does YouTube put an ad on my video even when I've chosen no ads? Can somebody leave a comment and let me know whether you're getting ads served on this video in particular because I'm super curious because I'm trying to not monetize the videos. It's not worth it for me like financially. I would rather you have a good viewing experience, but if that's not the case, I'd like to know. And the last thing I wanted to tell you was that my program 360 Align and Activate starts the first week of October. So we're talking less than two weeks. This is a 30-day program. It only costs $47, honey. And I know that's a, that's a lot of money actually, so I'm not trying to to say that it's not, but I've tried to price this program very affordably because I really feel people need it. And they need it because if you're like me, <laughs> this whole year, in fact, the last two and a half years have been so overwhelming. And um, we've seen what's been happening in the world. And a lot of us just need to take 30 days and reconnect with our body, mind, and spirit and open a real and dynamic channel of communication with ourselves and with spirit and then call in what spirit has for us in terms of life purpose. This is something that I put together because it's something that I did for myself that was absolutely a game changer in my life. And I'm not going to go into the whole thing. If you've been listening to my Life Magnetics podcast, you already know I've been talking about it. But to learn more, all you have to do is go to crystalandcompton.com slash 360, crystalandcompton.com slash 360. 60. You can register all the way up until the day that we start. We already have a lot of people signed up. I'm telling you, it's going to be fantastic. And there's a live component to it, meaning there's going to be groups like a share circle where we meet in person, we talk, we support one another, and God is going to be present. And that's just all I have to say. So if you're interested, check it out, crystallinecompton.com slash 360 and come and join me. I would love to meet you. All right. Without further ado, Let's get into this weird, wild, and wacky business happening in Ukraine with all these UFOs. Because you and I talked very early on mm -hmm. in, in the mm -hmm. baby stages, the infancy of our podcast yeah. about UFOs. Well, we've talked about them many times, but specifically, you talked about how UFOs and, and alien sightings have been more prominent around times of strife and war in the world, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And now these astronomers are saying they are seeing a lot of unidentified flying objects and whatnot around Kiev, Ukraine recently, you know, since the war between mm -hmm. Ukraine and Russia has been going on. And I, I kind of want to dig into that a little bit more because some of people that I know that follow us said, Hey, I, I want to know more about UFOs. I mean, I don't know how much more we can tell about them, <laughs> right? but, but I do think it's interesting because we're seeing a bit of, of a, a shift in the war because Ukraine is really holding their own mm -hmm. and kind of pushing back the Russian forces. So well, they no are Ukraine, I guess. Hugely subsidized, hugely yeah. subsidized, but yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yeah. They seem to be winning. So, they seem to be, and and it's interesting because for a while there, people thought, "Oh no, Russia's going to overtake you, and right. this is the end." Right. So, so it's interesting to see that. But now this shift in, and we're seeing, well, we aren't, but the astronomers are seeing so many unidentified flying objects. A couple of them, they they've said, "No, the, these are you know instruments of war," but several right. of them are not. 
And, and so with that statement that you made way back when, almost a year ago, that, you know, historically, we, you know, people have seen these things. What do you think is, is changing that, that <clears throat> we're seeing, well, they're seeing more of this now? And again, I need to ask, and, and I want you to tell me what your opinion is, why they're not sort of intervening in a, in a broader sense. I mean, I guess they, they have kept the, the button pushing and from obliterating the entire world, but, but I, I want to know what your vibes are about this. Well, my first thought is that much of the fighting is centered around Ukraine's nuclear reactor. And so yeah. as we discussed previously, when the buttons were deactivated, it was when there were missiles that were activated, nuclear missiles that were about to go off. And so then there were UFO craft seen in the area and the entire system was deactivated. So that's something that has happened historically in the United States. I don't know if it's happened abroad anywhere, but I think maybe that is why we see some UFOs around Ukraine now, because again, this nuclear reactor is in play. And if there's going to be a nuclear war, if we're going to be obliterating ourselves, I think that might be kind of a threshold where you might see if there are aliens, you might see some kind of alien intervention or you might see See some kind of intercession in that way. I think, I think a, a lot of it is military weapons that we're just not privy to. And you know what people typically say is that the technology that we currently enjoy in our lives as noobs and civilians is about 40 years behind or 50 years behind, or maybe even a century behind what the military is actually utilizing and what they have developed. And so we may look at something and say, well, that's a UFO, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's not United States or Russian or Ukraine weaponry. Mm -hmm. So I think some of it's drones and they said so. I think um, some of it can be explained away. But what, what, what can't be explained away is when something comes in and out of visibility, like a cloaking device, or when something is on a specific trajectory and all of a sudden they zip off this way and they're invisible again, yeah. like that kind of yeah. stuff, like that seems to break the law of physics. So I don't know how you can mathematically or in terms of science, how you can explain that unless there's technology that we're not aware of. I think it's fully possible. Like, listen, honey, I'm reading this book. It's called The Fourth Turning. Okay. I watched mm -hmm. this fascinating interview with Tony Robbins and the uh, one of the authors of this book. And without going into the whole damn thing, it is essentially a book. It's written by historians. So this is not a new age woo woo thing. It's written by historians and it just chronicles generations and periods of time in 25, uh, 25 year intervals. And there's four generations that we encounter over and over again, the first, second, third, and fourth turning. Once the fourth turning is over, we go back to the first, second, third, and fourth. So we are currently in something called the fourth turning. And historically, so over time, these guys charted it all out. In the fourth turning of history, there is always some kind of a cataclysmic crisis. There's a civil war. There's an external war. There's something terrible. Like, for example, the civil war happened during the fourth turning. The American Revolution happened during a fourth turning. I think World War II happened during a fourth turning. And now here we are in this decade and we are in the fourth turning. So I just think that we truly are on the precipice of something that could go very, very wrong, whether it's going to be in Ukraine whether it's going to be in Russia or whether it's going to be here in America, I don't know. But that to me would warrant presence from outside help because the Civil War, we didn't have technology. I mean, we had gun technology. But when Roswell happened, when the first kind of alien sightings and the alien crash happened, that's when we were starting to detonate atomic bombs. That's when the yeah. aliens, I think, are like, oh, these crazy monkeys down there on that planet, they're getting wild. We got to go in there and we got to check it out. And we got to start interceding on, on their behalf. That's Can when I ask we... why. Can I, like, in your opinion, mm -hmm. why do you think outside beings, mm -hmm. well, I mean, I think a lot of them are already here and whatever, but mm -hmm. why, why is it that they intercede seemingly to a point, but because, because I, I kind of, I'm of the opinion if you are this massively highly intelligent race of beings, if if you were evil and wanted to sort of take over the planet, you would have already. You, you clearly maybe they have, have already. 
Well, and that's very true. So, but then you have these other people that come in and intercede at these moments. Is it because they like maybe potentially the hold they have of, of our planet and don't want it to go away? Or, you know, what? like, what is it? Because I, I, I think we, I don't want to use the word invaded, but I do believe that we're going to talk about aliens. Maybe we are the aliens because I think they have been here longer than we have. I think mm-hmm. just, a, just an opinion. I, I feel like, like maybe mankind mm-hmm. Ha, mm-hmm. has been here less than other beings. But again, why then are we here doing this? Why are you interceding to a degree and, and less and back? I don't know. Well, it's here, all, here's the it's thing. All here's the thing with art, like movies, music, so much of that is channeled. That's channeled inspiration. And when I say channeled, is channeled from a higher dimensional consciousness. So much of it is. And mm-hmm. so I only say that to say that I think when Star Trek came up with the concept of the prime directive, they were certainly onto something. And the idea of the prime directive is that they could never really meddle in a civilization unless that civilization was on the brink of something catastrophic. Otherwise, um, maybe they could behind the scenes do some manipulation, but they, mm-hmm. but every civilization has free will. I think it is something like that. And I think, I mean, if you're, if you're, let's just talk in the system of this. I'm, I'm not saying I believe all of this, but you know, in the system of this, you have beings that are called service to self beings, and then you have beings that are called service to other service to self beings are selfish, egoic beings that would come to a planet like this um, to raid our resources and rile us up and cause division in order to control us in certain ways. Or the Archons, which the Gnostics talked about, who are actually etheric beings. These are the reptilians, the real reptilians, um, are are parasites of sorts. And they're using us for our fear and our anxiety and our warlike types of emotions. So those are service to self beings. And then they have no laws. Well, I mean, I think they are actually operating under kind of a galactic law. They can only go so far, but they're lawless, generally speaking, versus service to other. These are the beings that are here to actually help. These are the beings who are going through the entire shift with us. They're just in a different dimensional reality. And so they're here to help because they're here to help others. But they do have something like a prime directive. They can't they can't go as far as maybe they would like unless it gets to the point where you're about to nuke yourselves. And that's truly what I'm worried about with the situation. I totally feel this, Brian, in the timelines. I'm telling you, I feel this in the timelines that it's really possible that Putin drops a nuke. And if Putin drops a nuke, I think it's really possible, okay? I'm just telling you this. If he drops a nuke, it's about the response to that. We dropped an atomic bomb, right? And there was well, the technology wasn't there to respond to that with us, but the technology is here now. And so what would the rest of the world do if Putin nuked Kiev or Putin nuked somewhere in Ukraine? I think they would take, you'd see, I think you'd see the true alliances because I think people that the U S thinks would back them. Some won't. Well, I don't even know if it's about the U S I think it'd be about NATO. I think it would be about European presence. I'd be thinking about countries around Russia and what they would do, whether they would respond with nukes or not. Because I, my feeling is if he drops a nuke, they're not going to necessarily respond with nukes unless he keeps dropping nukes. If mm-hmm. he keeps dropping nukes, now they're dropping nukes. Now we've got nuclear war. That's We are so close to that because you're dealing with a madman, truly. And isn't it weird to you, Brian, that Putin has cancer, right? Um, the leader of China has cancer. Our guy has arguably an allegedly dementia. Like all of our w- world leaders, especially the ones at play right now, are all, they've got something going on in their physical body that's expressing itself as they're taking a part in this this kind of wild political theater. Yeah. I think you've got, if, if aliens are real, and I do believe in interdimensional beings, I think they're here. I think some are manipulating I think some have given us the technology that we're not aware of yet that is a century advanced to our smartphones, Mm -hmm. and I don't trust their motivations. But then you've got the other ones that are dismantling the nukes, so. I I like them, and I'm putting this out there right now. But they're not going to save us. If things are getting hairy, you might not save us as a civilization, but can you come get me? and take me i will go with you i'll be your assistant <laughs> i'll help you <laughs> i like, really that's, I, 
we want to be saved though like that's just we our do. human nature we like do. we want to be raptured we want to ascend we want to get on out of here we want some other being to come in here and give us enlightenment and allow us to live but it's it's the onus is on us as human yeah. beings to get there ourselves and that is what they are trying to give us the space to do but like i don't know if we're going to nuke ourselves first or if we're going know. to get it together but like looking out on the screen of our life it feels like as a consciousness we're just not getting it together yep. right now unfortunately unfortunately darling yep. but here's the other side of that we came here as spirits for such a time as this. I think yeah. as a soul, I was so stoked to get here right now. Like, oh, I wanna be alive when all of this is in play and so many things could go in all of these different directions. Also, there's so many different timelines intersecting all the time. Like there's so much happening that as a soul and as spiritual people, we wanted to be here now to anchor it and bring in the energy that needs to be present in order for us to get ourselves out of this mess. Yeah, so I, I mean, look what you do, you, what you've devoted your life to helping others. I mean, even from way back when, mm -hmm. when you were crystal light, <laughs> <laughs> crystal like to, light. Where, to where you've grown to now, right? When you were just sort of first finding yourself and moving through all those. So you're calling me you fat crystal no. light to, to I'm saying big heavy you are crystal? spiritually hey, hey, hey. full. Oh, you is are that spiritually what I am? Full. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and, and I think that's, that's really cool because people throw around the word light workers pretty loosely, yeah. but at the end of the day, I think that if you are truly working to be a better person and helping others be better people, you know, we're all in this ride, this crazy ride together. So, and I'm not saying, you know, we're not toxically positive. You know, we, we do see uh -uh. The, the dark side of things and you have to go in and do the shadow work and you have to, you know, but we're trying to pull others along with us, but our outlook is always optimistic. I mean, I, I have days that are more challenging than others, but I try always to, to, sort of resonate in high vibrational energy, even when muck is going on around me, because I feel better, right? Yes. And if I feel better, then I can do better and yes. I can be better. And that's not saying that we don't sort of acknowledge and honor that dark side, because you have to work through all of that. And we're all a work in progress. And, you know, we're not all woo, woo, woo all the time. I mean, we are, but we woo, 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 and we woo, woo, woo. So we're on earth being a woo, woo. Person. We are, we're we humans, are. We're right. But I think we're here because we chose to be, during this time so we can help be that sort of lighthouse for others to say we're here find us you know we're, we're beaming that light out so we can all join because if we're all vibrating really high together mm -hmm. it's like one candle and then two candles and right. three and then before you know it it's like riding in a plane at night and you know you see the darkness but then you get to a city and you see a small city with a little bit of lights then you see a big city with a lot of light. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to be one big ball of, you know, high vibrational energy. And I think the more we do that, the better off we are. And I constantly pray for peace. I could, I could, I mean, I want, I want there to not be homelessness. I want people not to be sure. hungry, but I feel like praying for peace is a good way to go because if there is truly peace in the world, then we have peace of mind, peace of body, peace of spirit. We're helping other people. We're living together. We're helping each other. Homelessness goes away. Hunger goes away. I think peace is truly an elevated state of being. And if we are all there together, everything falls into place in a good way. I 100% agree with that sentiment. There is a book by Dr. David Hawkins called Power Versus Force, in which he talks about vibration and the vibration of consciousness, okay? And he actually um, charts it out. It's really fascinating. It's a, it's a, it's a dense kind of a science -y book, but it's very fascinating. Um, and essentially, it's from zero to a thousand. And at a thousand, like the highest vibrational consciousness ever known on the planet was Jesus Christ. And then I think 990 is Buddha. And he has a very f interesting way that he calibrates this scientifically, which we won't get into now. But I, and I'm trying to remember, but he calibrated the consciousness of the United States and other countries. And at the time that he did it, the United States was calibrating, I think, in the 400s, three or 400s. But that's, that's okay, because, w for example, contrast that to when a dog wags his tail, which is just pure joy. I think that was like 500 or 600 or when a cat purrs, it's 500 or 600. So if the United States is at three or 400 versus a place like the Middle East at the time, which I think calibrated at like 80, contrast that with uh, other countries, we're actually doing pretty well. And then he kind of 
calibrated all of the places. And what I'm getting at is that I think he theorized that there were enough of us now that were of higher consciousness, higher sensibilities, higher standards of compassion, that it's not actually possible for us to go back or to degrade into a calibrated at an 80, like somewhere in the Middle East. Rather, we're so magnetic, the higher in consciousness we go, that we're pulling people along. We're pulling these other countries along into the higher consciousness of compassion and love. So that was very heartening to me, this idea that we can't actually devolve in our consciousness. Once you hit the light, once you become immersed and saturated by the light, you recognize the darkness and you end up choosing the light. So I think you're right. I think if we pray for peace and if we come together, I actually believe if we pray for peace in Russia and Ukraine, we will receive it. We will have it. But not enough of us are actually doing that because we're so scared. We're so anxious about what's happening, right? And we're watching the coverage and it's terrible to see all the terrible things that are happening over there that we don't get intentional and pray for a higher outcome. And we should. We should do as Brian does. Everybody be like Brian, okay? Oh, you flatter me. Stop it. I mean it. it. You intentionally it. pray for us. But it we, does. It we takes, need that. But, and, you know, it really only takes a couple minutes it really mm -hmm. does. You don't have to spend hours and hours going on and on and on about it. You just have to truly mean it and feel it mm -hmm. and, and just put that energy forward. Whether you verbalize it, whether you just think it and you feel it, it comes from the heart ball mm -hmm. and just put it forward. You know, it just, but I mean, I want universal peace. Like I want, I want peace in all the realms and all the lands and all the galaxies. I just, I just want nice harmony for all that is what I truly want. Hold the because vision if of every that. single thing mm -hmm. is is vibrating at peace, then we will all in this lifetime know bliss. I mean, I don't know if we'll get there, but, but I want us to get there. But can, I mean, can you just imagine waking up, not worrying about where where your your income's coming from, where your food's coming from? you know, goodwill from your neighbors. Like, like, you know, back in the day when movies were all the neighbors knew each other and they all got along and baked pies for each other. Like, I really just really wish we could get to a point where we all just cared about one another. Like we loved each other. That's all. That's all. Just a little something. I, I feel I like love you. that I love you as well. And I love everybody listening or watching. I think that it's possible. I'm not like in terms of linear timelines on earth. I don't know if we're going to get there in our lifetime. You know what I mean? But I think that it is definitely possible. And I think mo more and more of us are waking up and more and more of us want to see this kind of change. I think that there are systems in place, honey, <laughs> that need to be overturned. And there are certain robber baron personalities and oligarchs and the 1% hoarding all the money, all the property. And these systems have to be overturned. I mean, there's so much work that needs to be done, but nothing can be done in the physical until it is first imagined. Everything that's yeah. ever been done was first imagined into being. So we can start there with the vision of peace, harmony, peace in Ukraine, peace in Russia, no inflation, gas prices are going down. Let's keep them going down, honeys, by yeah. envisioning this peace in our country and other countries as well. Like it is all possible if we put our heart and our mind to it, amen.